Hello, everybody. My name is Hiro Akisato. I'm a member of the FIG Education Commission. I'm very excited to announce that FIG online seminars will continue in 2023. Since the online seminars started in 2020, we have conducted 28 seminars in total, receiving very positive feedback from all over the world. So today, I'd like to invite Luke Carson, Irish national coach and personal coach of Reese McRenigan. Reese became a Homer Force World Champion at the 2022 World Gymnastics Championships in Liverpool. Welcome, Luke. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Hiro. Um, thank you to the FIG for the invite. It's a great pleasure, a great honor to be a part of this amazing academy. And I hope that uh, my presentation can be of use to people across the world. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you on your achievement. You've been doing a fantastic job and I always look up to you and you motivate me a lot. So when you come to Japan for the first time at the training camp and we had a conversation and I thought that we have a lot in common as a coach. Since then, we share our experiences, the things, good things, and the bad things, the challenges that we face. So I really appreciate your friendship. You're very welcome. I mean, it's it's very mutual there. I look up to you a lot and uh, the achievements that you also have had throughout your career. And uh, it's been amazing getting to know you both on a professional and on a personal level. So thank you for continuing that relationship. In his presentation, he'll be talking about transitioning coaching styles and fundamental aspects of a successful and conducive coach-athlete relationship. He speaks on his own experience in developing a strong unity between coach and gymnast with the fundamental goal of maximizing potential. So I will hand over to you. Please enjoy his presentation. Hello and welcome to everybody watching. My name is Luke Carson and I am the Men's National Artistic Gymnastics Coach for Ireland. This is my keynote presentation for the FIG Coaching Academy and I've named this presentation The Modern Coach. I think a nice way to encapsulate the theme of this presentation is with the famous quote by John Wooden, a good coach can change a game, a great coach can change a life. And I think this is particularly true with the sport of gymnastics because of the very nature of the sport it requires an enormous amount of time um, from the athlete in the gym international travel training camps and therefore with your coach and i think that those years can be formative and so special care should be taken from the coach on how to conduct themselves and um, deliver a, a session in a certain way to try and be um a positive nature, a positive vibe, a positive influence on that athlete. So I think that the gymnastics industry as a whole has developed and I think there are nice ways of utilizing modern thinking to gain maximum potential. Now we know that the industry has developed because the FIG equipment is better refined than ever before. The skills in the code of points are more developed than ever before. The code of points rules and regulations are better written than ever before. Now at a slower rate, coaching styles, thankfully, are now more developed than before. They're now more in line with modern standards and expectations. And I think that there are, I know that there are many ways to coach, just like there are many ways to coach certain skills. There are many different styles to coach gymnastics. Um, I think that there is quite a clear um, transition and development of moving from an autocratic style of coaching to a democratic style of coaching. And they're two polarized versions of one another. Now, I would characterize autocratic style of coaching as, as being outdated. And it's about having closed decision making processes. And it's top down style of delivery do as coach says and from what I can see this tends to end in revolt and or dropout and nobody wants that um, 
as coaches, we invest an enormous amount of time into athletes, so we don't want them to just leave the sport at the end of it. And so, like I said, the, the opposite to that would be democratic style of coaching. And I think that the modern coach is more democratically inclined to their session delivery. Um, and I think this is about creating a more open and honest coach-athlete relationship, and it's about showing cards rather than hiding them. And I think as coaches and as support staff and, and governing bodies and federations, we should, we should ask ourselves, why should decisions about their choosing life paths be made without them? Because I don't think that they should. And I think that this style of um, session delivery could be based on creating an idea meritocracy. And what I mean by that is that simply put means the best idea wins. And it's about creating an environment within which these um, discussions um, can be had open, openly and honestly and in a democratic format. So what does it actually mean to coach more democratically? It's about showcasing that everybody can be represented in the decision-making processes. Um, it's about being collaborative during these processes so that, that voices are heard. And there, it's about holistic delivery. Because gymnasts are, they're, they're, they're much more than just gymnasts. You know, they're developing humans. They're developing um, adolescents into adults. And they are, they, are, they are not just your gymnasts. They are their own person. And in many cases, they're role models themselves. And they're learning and navigating what that is. And in, in many cases, they're also national, local, or international heroes. And that requires, um, that requires in many cases to learn quickly on what, what that actually is. And so they're developing lots of skills um, themselves. So if we can holistically develop them as a whole, we can help them along the way. And I think that's a really positive thing. And by encouraging a more open and honest coach-athlete relationship, the good, the bad, and the ugly, I think that can help be conducive to the overall goal, which is producing results. And I think you can only do that by taking accountability for how things are. And there's a really nice saying that truth is your ally. Seeing things as they are from a data perspective really can help you see how things are. And that's what I mean by taking accountability. There's no point saying um, that things are great when they're not um, because it's, it's just going to implode on itself. And I'm of the belief that the best way to create that is through trust and respect. And I am absolutely sure that a gymnast has the fundamental right to be able to trust a coach because a coaching role is one that, like I said earlier, can be formative and your example as a coach can influence the individual athlete and so extra care has to be taken when setting the example is your is is how you're conducting yourself an example or a warning because i think it's very important to check that every now and again and trust and respect are not something that can just be given you can't just demand it walking into a gym they have to be earned. And a coach needs to earn the respect of all of their athletes. And this can only be done through their example, their work ethic, their knowledge, i.e. their competence. Um, and should all of these principles be in line, this will lead to trust. And I think when you have trust and respect, this will equal a strong alliance. And that creates a stronger relationship between the coach and the athlete. And that's going to help take on the inevitable challenges of sports, the, the natural ebbs and flows of life, because there will be no one on this green earth that gets through life without ups and downs. And being able to be um, in a position to be able to navigate these challenges um, with your coach from a sporting perspective can only help. It can only be a positive thing. And I think one of the ways to do that, like I said at the start of the presentation, is by encouraging an idea, meritocracy. A coach shouldn't adopt this major general self-image. 
okay? Because a coach, there's a big difference between being a boss and a leader. And ultimately, a coach is another member of the team. And the reality is that the coach's idea might not always be the best idea. And that's okay. It is absolutely okay. Because as long as you're working hard as a coach, as long as you're being diligent in your processes and understanding each individual athlete and their individual needs, then the program will be prioritized around that athlete. And this should produce the best ideas and the best results. Ultimately, why wouldn't the best idea being implemented be a positive thing? And in many cases, from what I can see and what I've felt, is that ego can get into the way of allowing this to happen. So understanding that the coach is another member of the team can allow this to be created. Because delivering a holistic session and developing the athlete as a whole should should help involve the gymnast in in the decision making processes okay so create an environment within which open and honest discussions can be had in a healthy format is almost certainly going to maximize the probability of the best idea being produced and therefore implemented and this is how i would define an idea meritocracy the vegetarian coach eats, shoots, and leaves. Now, this is a slight plagiarized um, title of a famous book, um, but it demonstrates how language can change everything. In this case, it's punctuation. For what I want to talk about, it's, it's about communication skills and a basic foundation of communication skills. Because by developing these skills, you can help streamline the transfer of information to the gymnast. So reading and scanning for cues can help educate yourself and the individual and the context. So noticing and understanding body language. You absolutely do not need to be an expert in any way, shape or form to understand body language. We all know this from childhood all the way up to adulthood. We know that if someone comes in with their head down, their shoulders hunched, dragging their feet, speaking in a monotone, um, and, and fairly low levels of energy that they're not happy. And then the contrast to that would be if their, their chest is up, their shoulders are, are, are pinned back, their chin's high, they're smiling, there's an excitement within their, their tone. We know that they're, they're happy. And, and this can help you um, gauge cues and can help you um, understand and, uh, and if you're empathetic, feel how they are. And that can help navigate that session or competition or start understanding how they look when they're nervous. And then what's very important is that tone affects connotation. So I think it's, it is really important for coaches, especially when dealing with the younger athletes, that they should check their tone. Is it delivering the correct message? And how is your gymnast tone? You know, because that allows you to gauge their mood. Like I said earlier, is there monotone or is there a high pitch excitement within their voice? And you can, especially on competition days um, or times of importance or high pressure, you being able to read those cues can help you make quick decisions. And that's very important as a coach. And again, involving the gymnast in the creative process. And, and this, this lovely saying really pins up, tell me and I forget teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. And I know from my own personal learning and perspective that this is very true. Involving the gymnast also creates um, a sense of accountability within the program. And, and that helps teach logic behind the programs, which helps them make connections to, to skills and routines and then performances. So, you know, whether it's skill preps, conditioning, um, by, by teaching them the logic behind those things, it should help develop their conscious training, which should help um, them understand the sport better, the skills better, and how to perform better. And this should induce a more creative landscape. And I think um, being able to encourage that conscious training is, is super, super important for when it comes to performing. Because in those times of need and high pressure and high stakes, you want to be able to, as a gymnast, understand how to perform. 
and understand and have a mastery, like the code of point says, um, from an aesthetic point of view of these skills. So involving the gymnast in the creative process to me is, is a vital point um, and a vital part of that um, equation to creating good performance and maximizing potential. So then from a coach's point of view, I think it's really important to know yourself. Um, and there's a famous quote that says that that's where wisdom begins once you, once you know yourself. So coaches often spend the majority, if not all of their thinking time focused on others, focused on gymnasts, their programs, their health, um, their bosses, their CEOs, the government, um, KPIs, um, uh, travel strategies, you know, all of these things, it's with other people and focused on other people. And I, I, I am of the belief, certainly from a personal point of view, um, I know this, this can be very helpful, that spending time exploring your own thinking patterns, um, your characteristics and your decision-making processes can help you understand your values as an individual. And this can therefore help orientate you on your coaching journey because um, your values do shape who you are and they can decipher what you will do and very importantly, what you will not do as a coach and as, a, as, a, as an individual outside of the gym. And I think that every coach, because they do spend such an enormous amount of time thinking about other people, that they should invest time into themselves and that's not just from a monetary sense but but from a time sense spend dedicated time understanding who you are um, and when you start that process which it's not an overnight thing it takes time um, you do start to understand that 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 saying at the, at the top well, and it's where wisdom begins if you really do start to understand you and um, your, yourself as an individual, not just as, uh, as a coach, um, it, it actually can bring on happiness. It can bring on a nicer um, switch of perspective and a more revitalized sense of being. And that's a really positive thing. And you can know that from an, an athlete's point of view and from a coach's point of view. Because one thing that we all know as coaches, as a universal truth, is that a happy gymnast performs better. And what I'm now understanding um, in my coaching career is that a happy coach coaches better because we, we all have at one point have felt the inner distraction of being stressed or unhappy. It hinders creativity and it stunts progression. And I think that um, Olympic gold medalist Cal Schufelt writes really nicely in his book about how you can be demanding, not demeaning. And my interpretation of what this means is that you can still uphold high standards without blurring the moral code. So that is my uh, presentation. I believe that we're going to go into a um, Q&A. Um, and I look forward to those questions and I look forward to answering them. I hope this has been beneficial to coaches out there. Um, and these are just my own personal views. And I... I, I hope that it's enjoyable for people all around the world. Okay, thank you and goodbye. Thank you very much for such a great presentation. What you said in your presentation really resonates with me in many ways. Okay, so we still have a few minutes to left. So I'd like to ask you some questions, if that's okay. Yes, of course. At the very end of your presentation, you said a happy gymnast performs better. A happy coach coaches better. I think that's undeniably clear. That's true. But we both look on an eye uh, in a similar situation. As a national coach, we kind of have to deal with a certain amount of pressure all the time. Things just don't go well sometimes. The reality is harsh. Like you mentioned, coaches are people too. I understand the importance of being a happy coach, but I tend to sacrifice myself for others. So what kind of advice would you give to the coaches who are in a similar situation? 
Well, look, I think that being an ambitious coach um, and any ambitious coach that I've ever come across, there seems to be a common theme across them all. And it's that they want to maximize performance. And as long as that's in the, the healthy and correct moral confines that today's expectations and um, that basically the industry demands, which is a really good thing, I think then that healthy energy of being the best gymnastics coach that you can be can be a wonderfully productive thing. It can be an excellent thing. However, if if you allow that that healthy energy, and perhaps it could be um, uh, defined as a healthy obsession, then that healthy energy crosses over into the realm of being slightly unhealthy. And perhaps then it becomes unbalanced, where it's 100% gymnastics, 0% anything else. And I think when it becomes into that realm, then I think that the individual, i.e. the coach, is almost constantly moving the goalposts, uh, which uh, basically means that they're not going to be happy because they're chasing that perfection. And um, perfection ultimately doesn't really resist or uh, exist. So we're, we're trying to chase that and we're moving the goalposts. So we're never going to be happy as coaches or as individuals, which is why I often say, you know, spend that dedicated time to get to know yourself, to orientate yourself. Why are you doing things? Is it intrinsic? Is it extrinsic? What is motivating you to do this? You know, what is motivating you to be the best coach that you can be? Is it just solely to help everybody else around you? Or is it is there other things going on as well? Because it is important to have that orientation. And so my advice would be to take stock every so often, to sit back and say, hey, you know what, actually the last three years, I've achieved X, Y, and Z. I've had a positive impact over here. I've created nice um, uh, international results here. And then these grassroots levels, these young guys are coming up and that's a really exciting thing. And I've, I've, I've done a good job here. And so to take that time to actually recognize that, and I'm guilty of not doing that. I've, I've um, you know, with races, there's Commonwealth, World, European titles, and almost 24 hours after some of those, I'm I, I'm almost forgetting about it. I'm moving on to the next thing. Um, and I, I, looking back on it, I don't think that's a good thing. Um, and I, I say in, in, the, in the workshop, is your life or how you're presenting yourself an example or a warning? And I think that's an excellent way that I personally have found a, a, a good question to ask myself every now and again. Okay, is how I'm conducting myself and doing what I'm doing an example i.e. a positive thing that other people can learn from? Or is it a warning where people look at you and say, yeah, I don't want to be that guy. And ultimately, are you happy in what you're doing? Because it's, it is very true. A, a happy coach will perform better. And we know this in every walk of life. It's not just acute to sports. It's in everything, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, uh, a car mechanic, whatever it is, if you're happier, you're you're going to have an aura of positivity about you. And that's going to be a good thing, especially in sports where it can be conducive when you're when you're so close and spending so much time with an individual. And then I guess my other piece of advice would be to try and find some time to switch off, because as much as we can be ambitious and pragmatic and energetic towards a goal, um, which is gymnastics. It is nice to have something else. It's it's nice to have something else, a hobby of some sort, whether whether that's a nice film, whether that's a med um, meditation, whether it's a walk on the beach, or simply just a good quality game of chess. Um, you know, all of this can be a nice way just to switch off and 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 be able to allow your brain to to move away from gymnastics momentarily, momentarily to then, uh, like I said, to take stock you know, to think about, actually, do you know what? It's been a great year. And a lot of people would do this at the end of the year, at New Year's Eve. Um, certainly for my part of the world, it's a, it's a big thing at New Year's Eve. Everyone talks about this upcoming year and all these new things that are going to happen. And they, and, they, and they look back on the year and they think about whether it's good, bad or indifferent. I, I would argue perhaps it's a good way just to do it throughout the year. Maybe it's a monthly thing. Maybe it's a weekly thing. Maybe you journal it. Maybe you write it down. But don't wait until the end of the year to, to pat yourself on the back because maybe you can do it a bit more often. Thank you very much for such an informative advice and I'll put your advice into action. So in your presentation, you said um, the gymnast has a fundamental right to be able to trust a coach. This is absolutely true. And uh, how did you develop that sort of mindset 
you know, um, because it's definitely true, but it's not many people can think that way. So I'd like to ask you about this, the, the thought process, why it happens. I think I, I realized that when, um, with dealing with, with younger athletes, that when they look up to you in, in a literal format, not just um, figuratively speaking, but when they're literally looking up to you for advice, for feedback, for guidance, then you realize that in, in a very real way, you're in a position of power and it's very important to use that power to help that individual um, and that you're helping develop them um, and that you're that you're helping guide them through your knowledge, um, whether that's your own experience or whether that's just your own diligence of understanding and reading about gymnastics. And I can remember very vividly at a competition um, in, in 2016 and Reese was on the podium. He had made a final and he he looked up to me. He was chalking his hands and he looked up to me and uh I could see that he was eager to to hear something from 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 me as his coach at the time, and what I decided to say at that moment was because I'd I'd keep in, I'd kept track on every single routine he had done throughout that um, program, and as it happened, he had done one hundred clean routines, and what I said to him in that moment of time was, "You've done one hundred clean routines. Let's make it one hundred and one." And it doesn't need to be anything more than that. You know, we're not going there to score, score a certain score because that's subjective. We're not going there to do anything that's out of your control. It's another routine. And in that moment, I realized that, that those words, that guidance um, that I was um, explaining to the gymnast was really important. And the gymnast then had what I believe the fundamental right to be able to trust what I was saying was the correct thing. Um, and that's throughout the program. So that you're, that you're doing the correct numbers in a healthy way, that you're describing the, the program in a good way. And that you're the day in, day out, every session that you're doing is for the sole reason of maximizing the potential of that individual. And as I said earlier, as long as that is in the correct confines of today, um, through its moral compass, then that's an excellent thing. That means that you're doing everything that you can to help that that gymnast. And and I think it's 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 really correct that that gymnast should have the fundamental right to trust the coach. So if a, if a coach is not making the correct decisions for that individual, then people around need to challenge that and question that because it's we have to safeguard these gymnasts because we're spending so much time with them. Gymnastics requires so much time, so much energy in the gym that it has to be a positive thing for them because if it's not, then maybe it's not worthwhile. And we want to make gymnastics worthwhile because it's a beautiful sport. It can offer so many life lessons and we want to make sure that we as coaches who have got experience within that sport that we are we are taking all the positives and all the things that we did wrong, that we learned wrong, or that our coach perhaps that we would have maybe changed. It's our job now as coaches to take all of that and make it a positive thing for our up and coming athletes. We could continue to talk about this topic for the next couple of hours, I think, but I think we have to wrap up this seminar. So I certainly believe that everybody does enjoy this seminar as well as you know this q a sessions and so thank you very much for your contribution to this seminar and also i wish you all the best uh, at the next competition i'm looking forward to seeing you at the world championships this year thank you very much i've i've really enjoyed this opportunity to express my thoughts and my feelings on the subject um, it's been fun putting that in a creative format and I, I truly hope that it, it helps people, that it gives people a bit of orientation. So, yeah, thank you to everybody involved. Um, yeah, I'll see you on the international circuit. I certainly believe that everybody enjoyed this seminar. I wish you all the best for the upcoming competitions and I look forward to seeing you at the World Championships this year. Mm -hmm.